Diablo 4 got a pretty big update today. It did come with breaking some of the things in the game, but there are some workarounds we're gonna talk about as well as some changes to the patch notes that have already been released. So let's talk about the update. First thing to talk about with the patch notes is this is a quality of life patch. So you're gonna be noticing things like enchanting windows, giving you a warning of greater affixes. You're gonna be seeing reduction in gold costs. You're gonna be seeing the masterwork materials can now be directly transmuted instead of having to transmute it, then open a cache. There is also now clarity in the game where it actually shows you what the armor cap is 9,230 armor is required for maximum reduction against level 100 enemies and beyond. So there was some confusion before that that's only for level 100 enemies. 9,230 is just the cap of armor you need in Jimro. In order to add sockets to jewelry, you need these scattered prisms. You can see I don't have very many of these. Well, the drop rate has now been increased of these. Treasure goblins can drop these more often. The chance has been increased across all the world tiers, as well as the world bosses will always drop them and increase the number of them that they do drop. I think it's pretty cool. The Butcher now always drops it too. I like to see buffs to the Butcher. Butcher is a pretty iconic Diablo surprise boss. So I always like to see when he's a pretty big loot pinata. They've made it visually a little bit more clear when comparing items. And then we have an absolutely insane amount of bug fixes here. A lot of these were clarity or issues related to the user interface. So the game should be a lot smoother just in general when navigating the interfaces. Just as an example of one of these, there were some skills that you could not search for by core in the skill tree. One interesting one that got fixed was there was an issue where if you left the Helltide then came back, it would continually generate monsters over, over and over again. And this would stack within the party. So basically you would max out your threat, leave the area, come back, and it would just overload the area with even more minions than you're normally used to. This has since been fixed. Also the extremely annoying invisible wall problem has been fixed. There was also an issue where people thought that they they got locked out of the pit and that it just was bugged and they could never use it again because you didn't have the rune shards. You couldn't click on it. Now you can at least click on it. It would just tell you you need the rune shards. Now there is an issue currently in the game actually. If you go to the blacksmith and you look, it's masterworking is locked out. I, I obviously have masterwork gear, but I can't use masterworking. This is a bug that has been confirmed by Blizzard, but there is a workaround. On the forums here, they post that a workaround is to run any pit level or transmuting materials to unlock the masterworking again. So just run one pit and you can use masterworking again though they are going to hot fix this issue, they state. You're now going to retroactively get your resplendent spark from the Echo of Lilith. So if you did this and didn't get that piece, you will now acquire that. Having killed Lilith, I can see, yep, my resplendent spark is actually here now. Now, one of the most, how to put this, controversial things that was in this patch notes was related to Bash Barbarians. If you look through the patch notes, Bash Barbarian actually doesn't come up anywhere in here anymore. As you scroll down to skills and core mechanics, you can see Bash Bar Barbarian's not listed within here anymore. There was a response to this. Adam Fletcher says, hey, Barbarian friends, pull up a chair, it's story time. Bash is still multiplicative and the notes are being updated. Nothing was changed for this. It was actually an attempt from the team to fix a tooltip issue. Fixing this tooltip issue caused a multiplicative scaling issue, which we experienced internally, but no one actually saw fix the issue, but it accidentally landed in public notes. They're updating the notes to reflect this. Bash is staying the same. You may continue the shouting at the means of hell, not and not about Bash. So basically, Bash is not nerfed. If you are playing a Bash Barbarian, you do not have to worry, it is staying the same. So you can now see with this quality of life of the patch, the cost for reduction is actually down. It's 400,000 for the next master working. If I was going to do like a higher tier one here, down to 600,000 and from 1 million to 800,000. So there's been a reduction across the board in gold costs. This should help with the gold starvation issue. Overall, a pretty healthy patch. I am glad to see that they're kind of working on their tooltip definitions as there has been some debate within the community lately around tooltips. One of these, for example, being Frigid Fate. If you look at this, it says you deal bonus damage to vulnerable enemies equal to 10% X of the total amount of your bonus damage with code up to a maximum of 30. So it says current bonus 22% right now. So you would think that that would mean at least the way that I would read it and other people would read it is you deal bonus damage to vulnerable enemies, meaning that's its own multiplier. I'm currently doing 22% additional global multiplier. But if you look at my vulnerability damage here and I see 349.1%, and then if I actually remove this one from the skill tree, 
you would think there'd be no change in vulnerable, but what it actually does is you remove this and you look at it again here, and now the vulnerable damage has gone down. So what people are debating right now, there's actually a video about this called, I think it was, what was his name, Gold Farming Guide, and some people are going back and forth about this. I'm not really a math guy, but if you look at it, now the vulnerable damage is going down, and his argument is, well, this is actually multiplying the amount of vulnerable damage you're doing, which is uh, in create bonus vulnerable damage as opposed to you deal bonus damage to vulnerable, which are actually innately two separate things. So the, regardless of that debate that's going on right now, one thing is crystal clear, which is the tool tips could be a little better in terms of clarity for people. So I am glad to see that in this patch, there is a lot of user interface and tool tip related fixes coming to the game. Not in this one in particular, but Barbarian being one of those examples. Currently as it stands, this is the most fun I have been having with Diablo since the launch of the game. Actually, this season is highly enjoyable. I'm gonna be playing multiple characters to 100, which is not something that I normally would do since the launch of the game. I play like one character, but I've done all of the Uber bosses now on my softcore druid, did Uber Lilith, been pushing the pit, masterwork to piece the gear, the 12, et cetera. The game just feels like the core loop is way more enjoyable. So I'm liking to see a little bit of focus on getting some of the quality of life and the annoying things out of the way. And then going into the further seasons, they're gonna be adding more and more content into it. And speaking of Druid, if you're one of my fellow Druids and you were trying to run the Boulder Hurricane build, but it just was bugged and not working, that has been fixed too. So for all four of the other people out there playing Druid with me, you can now play your Boulder Hurricane build. So pretty decent sized update in terms of quality of life and the economy in Diablo 4, and we'll see what the next update has to come. There's still quite a bit of months left in the season. That's about it for this video. Love y'all. Consider subbing if you want to. If not, don't worry about it. Have a wonderful day.